Today I was able to share in an experience of a sharing of the true gospel. And by contrast, the mainstream religious idea of evangelizing is really just a hard sales pitch of attempting to get people to quickly convert to a particular doctrine. And it's not the good message at all, the euangelion, the good message. What it is, is a sales pitch based on first tearing a person down and then attempting to give them a way to remedy the problem that you just presented to them. And I've noticed a similarity that when you see uh, teachings on, on how to make an effective sales pitch, the first thing that you do is present the person with a problem, real or perceived. Um, and so that's what typical evangelism is, is, is by the book, it's a sales pitch. Um, the real gospel is not a sales pitch. The real gospel is to extend kindness to one another. The real gospel is to love one another, help the needy, comfort the grieving, show mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. And that's what it's really all about, is loving one another. It's not about converting to a particular doctrine. So we're going to take a look here, and we're going to see the beginning of what Jesus said in Luke four seventeen and 18. It says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ear. So, it seems that according to this text, he's interpreting that preaching the gospel includes healing the brokenhearted, preaching deliverance to, cap to the captives, recovering the sight of the blind, and setting at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is Jubilees, which is the restoration of all things. It's liberty. It's the restoration of all things. The year of Jubilees was when property that had been taken from you due to a debt was returned to you, whether the debt was paid or not. That's the acceptable year of the Lord, that the inheritance is yours. So to truly share the gospel is to reach out in compassion to someone, not to attempt a hard sales pitch to convert them to a particular doctrine that is exclusive to your denomination and either slightly or vastly different than that of another denomination. It's to show love and compassion one to another. And so it's to be the strength in the weakness of others. It's to be the weakness needing the strength of others. And that's what the real gospel is. We see in Zechariah 7, 9, and 10 a definition of true judgment. And according to this, true judgment is not punitive. It's not punishing somebody for their wrongdoing. According to Zechariah 7, 9, and 10, it says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. That's true judgment. So when you talk about the judgment of the Lord, there's the definition of it. It's to show mercy and compassion, not retributive justice. So what I was able to do today is that I attend a local assembly and... Although I have a number of differences in doctrine to the people here and the leadership, what they do have is an understanding of sharing the gospel, which is to show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. 
they understand healing each other. They understand reaching out in compassion. They understand extending kindness one to another. They understand having someone's back. They understand the principle of what's truly behind the message, the true the true evangelion. They're not out there trying to hard sales pitch convert people into agreeing with them on all points of doctrine. What they're doing is seeking out people in need and attempting to fill that need. So today, I attended a men's group that they have on a weekly basis for people that are trying to get back into life, people that are trying to recover from whatever it is that set them back. Often this is drugs or crime or an addiction of some kind. But these are people that are trying to figure out how to get back on their feet. So one of the guys, and we'll call him John, since that's a generic enough name. John's sharing about the kinds of things that he had in his past. And the kind of guilt and shame that he feels about the things that he's done in the past. And he's calling himself undeserving and talking about the variety of suicide attempts, some of which were documented and known about, and numerous others, which he just clung to by himself. And he was getting choked up and starting to tear up, and he's talking about how he sees other people in the position that he's in. He sees his own way that he had lived in others. And it it hurts for him to be able to see this and realize the blind eye that's turned to this, or even worse, the judgment that's called against such people. And he pointed out how sometimes people will look at someone in this kind of situation and think, oh, they're just a junkie. A complete devaluation of that person's situation and the value of that person's life. And he thinks, you know, because I was there. I was there myself. And I know what it's like. And, you know, what I needed was somebody to reach out to me and help me. So, We can't look at people and judge them for their situation. We need to reach out and help them. And it was, he was really feeling his own pain, but he was feeling the pain of others in that situation because of the pain that he had experienced himself. And he was talking about how having gone through that is what makes him, makes it so apparent to him in seeing it himself. The, the way that he's able to see others in that situation, and, and they're, he's not blind to it. It's not something that just, you know, goes by and, and the day goes on. It, it tears him up to think that other people are stuck in that, in that situation that he had come from. And so... As he's continuing to just really be choked up and slightly crying, expressing these thoughts, one of the other guys stands up and then he was asked, you know, are, are you okay? And he says, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm getting up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my brother a hug. And he went over to John and he wrapped his arms around John and he said, it's okay. He said, you know, I'm I'm just I'm gonna hold on to you right now. Just let it out. So just let it out. And so they're standing there hugging, and some of the other guys are putting their hands on as well. And a little bit of time had passed by, and John says, "You know, thank you for for doing this." And the other guy says, "I'm not letting you go yet." I'm not done. And he just grabs tighter. And at that point, John just started sobbing 
I guess is the best way to put it. He just, he, that was when whatever it was that had a hold of him broke. Something was released. Something about the way that he was feeling in that moment changed. Something about what he had been clinging to, he was able to let go because someone else held on. You know, and to me, because the guy who did this, the guy who was giving John a hug, had done something like this for me. You know, it's the same guy. (laughs) You know, he did the same kind of thing for me. And he reached out to me when I needed it. So, later, another guy went up and gave John a hug and said, you know, he said to him, you're not undeserving. That's a lie. He said, you're, you're not undeserving. That's a total lie. Whatever it is that you did, whatever it is that's in the past is dead in the past. It's not you. You aren't the things that you did. You are who God says you are. You are who God says you are. Don't believe this lie that you are those things you did. Don't believe the, that lie that says that you're this old man that you're still carrying around. Let it go. He's dead. The lie is that is that you need to identify with that. And continue to express an understanding of what it is to feel hopeless and in despair. And he said to John, I know what it's like to just feel like the darkness is so overpowering, it just suffocates you. And all you want is to not even have to take another breath, that it hurts to breathe. And it's in that moment that you most need someone to come and breathe into you the breath of life. And that's what it is to be inspired, to breathe into your nostrils the breath of life when somebody is suffocating on their own darkness and despair and grief. So the gospel is to comfort the grieving and to heal the demons, you know, and I'm not talking about supernatural spirit beings that this man had. He had things in his mind from experiences he had had and things he had done to people to hurt people. And he's haunted by it. And to cast some of that out and let some of that go and break some of that bondage is what the message is all about. And maybe you're the one that needs that broken for you. And so one of the keys too is that you might be the one in need. You might need be the one that's burned out. You might be the one that's broken. You might be the one that's healing. And to find that place where someone will grab onto you and say, I'm not letting go, is what the gospel is all about. It's not about whether you agree with a pre-tribulation rapture or not. It's not about what your interpretation of the Trinity is. It's not about doctrine. It's about love for one another. And I just feel really privileged to have been able to watch this guy work on another guy and release him from what he was going through. And so afterwards, I told him, I said, you're the real deal. I said, you're the real thing. I said, you're living the kingdom. I said, you did the same thing for me that you did for John today. And I'm just overwhelmed by what it is that you're 
just continue to show and to live out. To me, that's the gospel. The gospel is not about rules. It's not about laws. It's not about doctrines. It's about being the proof that God is good by living it and showing it and demonstrating it and reaching out and executing true judgment and show mercy and compassion to every man to his brother. That's what the gospel is. That's why it's the good message. That's why we're ambassadors of Christ. And I told this guy, I said, you're a true ambassador of Christ. You're the real deal. I mean, I don't know what else is going on in your situation in your life, and I don't care. It's irrelevant to me. Because the love that you continue to show, genuine, true mercy and compassion, is what the whole kingdom is all about. And so... I don't even necessarily know why I had prepped this at this point. But we see in Mark 9, on the Mount of Transfiguration, that there's Elijah and Moses and Jesus. And Peter thinks that they're going to build a tabernacle for each one of them. But... Then it says in verse 7, And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. And I like in Matthew, it actually says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. I guess my point is that this episode here on the Mount isn't one where it said, This is my lawgiver. Hear him. It didn't say, This is my prophet hear him. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So, I don't think that there could possibly be a more direct message saying everything bows down to the son, not to the lawgiver, not to the prophet, not to any of that stuff not to rules, not to prophecies of doom and gloom, but to a son who proclaims forgiveness in the act of being brutally and unjustly murdered. A son who forgives his transgressors. A son who, if you think about the resurrection, I mean, if you wanted retribution, what a perfect time for it. What a perfect time to say, you know, I let you I let you do what you did to hang yourself and now it's payback time. Um there's no payback time. It's not coming. That's a that's a fiction, it's a fantasy. What's not a fiction and what's not a fantasy is extending mercy and compassion towards others and seeing your own past experience in them and walking with them through it. And that's the true gospel.